the group chief executive officer of the NNPC Limited, Mala Melekeri, has declared that the drive to bring compressed natural gas closer to Nigerians has commenced and is irreversible. During the simultaneous commissioning of 12 CNG stations in Abuja and Lagos, Kerry stated that in addition to the nationwide deployment of CNG stations, NNPC Limited in, and its partners will also build three liquefied natural gas stations in Ajaokuta. Kerry commended President Bola Tinubu for providing the necessary support to drive domestic gas utilization, which aims to deliver a cleaner and cheaper energy sources to Nigerians. He assured that the NNPCL will continue to deliver more strategic gas projects to benefit the Nigerian people in line with the presidential CNG initiative of bringing prosperity to all Nigerians. Kerry also reaffirmed NNPC's determination to guarantee the nation's energy security. Now, public affairs analyst Mustafa Iwinla joins me now for more discussion on the CNG. Thanks for joining us, Mustafa. Thank you for having me, Justin. All right, CNG, CNG is uh, been uh, in the news since uh, last year when the president announced that um, subsidy is gone and the Nigerians were wondering how they were able to circumvent the issue of um, fuel scarcity, uh, high cost of uh, PMS and all of that. It was as though the CNG was the next good thing after bread and butter, if I may say. Sure. But then... It's been one year we are yet to start enjoying the fruits and the benefit of CNG. And um, the federal government is also looking at another angle right now to get into e-hailing. But let's talk about the CNG buses and the CNG initiative so far. What are your thoughts? So I, so I think this is a very um, laudable initiative by the federal government if it is, you know, well you know, executed. I mean, for people like us, we've always clamored for... CNG powered vehicles and mm. even the LNG, the liquid, liquefied natural gas, mm. and because ultimately it's going to reduce a lot of stress on our petrol and you know diesel vehicles. Mm. If you look at what what has been happening in our petroleum sector in the past couple of years, you see that we depend so much on petrol, and the time the the, 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 the time we look for alternative you know fueling system like the CNGs and the LNGs, I think, is, is the right time as we speak today. If you go to countries like the UK, for example, the UK has a total number of 1.1 million registered CNG vehicles mm. that, are, that are powered electrically. And the UK is also saying that in the year 2020-35, there will hardly be any vehicle on the road that will be using petrol or diesel. They are, not, they are not making it mandatory, but you will hardly see a brand new car that is going to be sold for, at any car dealership that will be petrol or diesel because they want to mm. electrify the old system. And I think that's also the queue the country, the federal government is also looking at, which I think is highly commendable because it will reduce uh, the long queues on the road mm. and it will also reduce a lot of, you know, the cost of transportation in the urban centers for, you know, for people, you know, to commute effectively. If you go to the U.S., for example, uh, the U.S. I think the U.S. has started this uh, electric and CNG-powered vehicles for mm. you know for a while now, and uh, the as we speak today, the, the United States of America has about 2,500 2, registered uh, you know electric vehicles that has also reduced their pressure on petrol and also diesel. So I think again is a good step. And we are finally seeing uh, the effect of having the government who listens. Mm. But my biggest worry is just the you know, functionality and the sustainability of this policy. Okay, let's even get into that, the sustainability and functionality of um, yeah. this initiative. We know how initiatives uh, sometimes start in the country yeah. uh, midway or just uh, flung it and um, you know, we don't even know what happens to yeah. it. Looking at the situation in our downstream sector with uh, our oil and gas, uh, but how, how, do you, how prepared do you really think we are for the CNG? Because uh, when it was really announced, uh, uh, people were really excited about it. But then yeah. there was this school of thought that believed that it will actually start affecting the price of um, LNG, uh, what um, Nigerians use for cooking. You know, don't you think there might be some sort of um, uh, issue uh, because uh, there will be uh, more demand for CNG that somehow the price of LNG might be affected? So, so, um, so compressed natural gas and you know, liquefied natural gas are very essential 
uh, uh, what's it called, items that I think that mm -hmm. we need to start to imbibe the culture of using. I, I know that I know that sometimes in my house I used to use the LNG to power my generator, mm. and I don't use petrol. Okay. I've been doing that for over five years, and it has been very effective. So at times when maybe I get you to teach me. <laughs> yes, yes. So so at times when people have to go on queues to look for fuel, I yeah. don't even bother myself. I just use my wow. gas cylinder, connect it to my gen, and I'm and I'm you know getting power. So I think yes, it's not going to. So I think there's going to be a balance. There's going to be a mm. balance in the consumption of. CNG and there's also going to be a balance in the consumption of LNG. LNG. If you look at what has happened, the, the uh, NNPC is saying that they're going to give 50% discount to, you know, e alien, uh, mm. you know, uh, apps for mm. I mean, drivers like the Ubers the yeah. whole, and all that. And I think it's also going to, you know, help reduce the cost. Okay, fine. Let's even get to that now that you have mentioned that, yeah, you know, yes. the NURTW, they are also in the news with their Meridian um, counterpart. They are, from what we hear, uh, with this conversion, uh, NURTW and Meridian are getting free. Yeah. Then those who do the uh, the e-hailing, the yeah. Ubers, uh, the boats, and the yeah. uh, riders of yeah. this world, they are, Getting it at some fifty percent discount, fine. I know there's a bit of this um, the discriminatory pricing, yes. but then, what do you really make of it? So NURTW is a national, you know, union of road transport workers. Yes, it's the Nigerian arm of our transport, you know, union that you know helps us to commit people from hmm. different points to another. So most of these EAL, um, you know, the the you know the uh, hubs, the taxes and all that are most of them are not locally and are, are not. Nigerian, you know, complaints. No, they're not. So, mm. I mean, for the government to say that giving them fifty percent discount, it's I mean, it's, it's a step for you know to you know cushion a lot of effect for them in terms of the price for fuel. Now, fuel is sold for at least eight hundred, seven fifty in some places. So, if the government is giving them fifty percent discount, it's something to help them to reduce their stress to and to also re totally reduce the price of you know. Uh, committing ourselves from one point to another. So it's a good step. So if the government is saying NERT will be free, I mean, we cannot, I mean, they, I mean, they, they, there's always been a lot of synergy between the NERTW and the government because they are just a harm of the government. And they're the, actually closer to the people because yes, the average yeah, Nigerian closer, commission so, with the so, yellow so downfall you, buses. You can imagine all the yellow downfall buses and all the, all the, you know, the BRTs and all that. Mm. So it's easier for people to, to reduce the cost of that. Because that's why we're saying that people spend so much on transportation. Okay. In a country where people earn 100,000 naira and spend 90,000 naira transportation in a month, so that's, that's a problem. But with the implementation of the CNGs and the, you know, it will drastically reduce transportation cost for Nigerians and it will, you know, have a mm. positive impact on our means of livelihood, that we, you, know, you know what I mean. So I think it's a good step. Again, I've also tried to look at the app. Mm. My one of, so one of, one of the things that we also need to look at is again the functionality of these things mm -hmm. i've downloaded the app and i've tried to also register just mm. to see how practical these things are so because one is of it the, practical very practical because one of the things that you it's not enough to implement policies how practical is this policy is it is it is it going to be very sustainable mm. so in a case where i've downloaded the app i've registered and i'm and at a point it tells you that it will send you an email for verification okay so i downloaded the app sometime last night Hmm. But I'm still waiting for that email for ver to verify my email, to verify okay. my account. Yeah. So for now, whatever thing I have to do with the app now is on hold, pending when... You get your verification. I get my verification in my email. So that's, hmm. those are the issues. So I don't think sending the email for verification should take this long. Hmm. So in a place where people want to, you know, subscribe to this policy, hmm. but all those like this re registration and all that, because when you, once you register on the app, you now need to look for conversion centers close to you mm. then it's not that, that, that's that's where you know the points to go to mm. in the uk where they use electric cars i've said it 1.1 million registered electric cars in the uk a country of 69 million mm. that which and, uh, and they're saying that in, in the year 2035 they want to outface outface fuel and petrol cars mm -hmm. so um so uh, i've registered and i think that's that's why in the uk if you go around the uk you will see electric chargers all around different malls. Hmm. So these conversion centers has to be enough. Uh, yeah, but that's, that's the next question because when you talked about um, some of the 
uh, challenges, uh, yes. taking time to get verifi uh, verified uh, via yes. email so you can yes. continue with the process. Yes, the That's just one of um, maybe se several challenges. Right. Another yes. question yes. that comes to mind is um, the convention uh, conversion centers and them um, how adequate uh, and them um, how uh, close are they to the people and, and if we do have service enough service centers to okay. service centers. So, so imagine that you have converted your car to CNG. And there's an issue with the trans, uh, trans you know, transmission one mm. way or the other. You are not yeah. able to, you, you are not able to get your car to work. So mm -hmm. how, so, how, so how many conversion centers are we going to have? Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to be stranded on the road. Yes. Imagine that you have you know, totally cut off petrol from your car, and you are now using CNG, and suddenly your car develops a fault on the road, mm. and the mechanic is telling you is from the CNG, whatever, whatever, and you cannot even assess a close by conversion center or service mm. center to quickly run to and fix the problem and move on with your day. So those are the issues. So as the, this policy is being bettered, mm. I think it's also very critical that we also, you know, put in measures to have service centers at close proximity for okay. people. Still on uh, service and the maintenance, uh, you, you give an instance of uh, maybe your, your, your car breaking down yes. or stopping yes. just by the midway and you need to work on it. So doesn't that really suggest that aside from just having service centers, that we need to upgrade or upskill, uh, you know, uh, engineers, um, mechanics, as it were, so they can actually get updated and be able to also work on them CNG cars. Yes, yeah, so, so, so one of the issues car users face in Nigeria mm. is uh, the fact that we don't even have, you know, specified car mechanics for, mm. for um, specified cars. Mm. So in a country where a mechanic will be fixing a Toyota brand, it will fix a... <laughs> A Volvo brand, it will fix a Mercedes brand. Most of the that's why most of the cars and if you go around, a lot of mechanics have turned people to, uh, you know, uh, to, uh, they made people carless because <laughs> you get you get your car to a mechanic, you would you will be troubleshooting for a different fault entirely. So, so it is also very important for the government to train, uh, you know, personnel who would be experts in fixing these CNG powered cars, hmm. so that when, once there is a breakdown, the it's so the, the the repair works comes real time. I mean, you can get it fixed yeah. within the next one two hours. That you can you know go back to the road to start to commute yeah. and you know you know you know continue your business of the day. So so I, again, I, I saw I saw a report by the NNPC. Yeah. Sometimes in 2021 September 2021, NNPC invested 20% uh, stake yeah. in Dangote Refinery. Yeah, that was about that's if you put that it was almost about almost 2.76 billion US dollars. And sometimes two weeks ago we heard from Aliko Dangote saying that the NNPC has reduced it's their stick. stake in Dangote refinery to mm -hmm. about 7.2 percent. Mm -hmm. So so then the NNPC boss said that they did that mainly for reasons that they want to invest more on CNG on you know on compressed natural gas CNG okay. because it's more cost effective. Mm. So and what that means is that the investment is going to be you know across board, investing in the policy you know creating this uh, you know uh, uh, enabling environment for people to be able to you know assess these conversion centers, assess the you know mechanics who will be on ground to fix issues and all that because it's, it's, it's a policy that we're not used to in this mm. part of the world. Okay. In the United Kingdom, if you are driving, even our insurance, even it, it also takes us to our insurance policies too. In the United Kingdom, when your cars break down, you can call your insurance company right there and there where you are. They will bring an alternative vehicle for you to take mm -hmm. you home, and the car will be with you until your car is being fixed or replaced. Then, then, you can, then they can now come back and take back the the alternative car that was given to you. So those are issues. So. But we live in a country where even our insurance companies need to do better too. Hmm. Because as we are thinking of these policies, we must think of, okay, what if it does not work? What if uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't play out the way we plan? So how, what are the measures to cushion that effect to, you know, to be on standby for damages or for, you know, in times of breakdown? Because people are not used to CNG cars yet. No, so, so, so by the time it becomes fully implemented, we are going to discover a lot of issues that might, you know, come with it. But so hmm. the government has to be proactive enough to have on standby repair policies too, okay. maintenance culture, sustainability. It's not like we, we, a lot of all these policies, we have them in place already in the country, yeah. but our sustainability and functionality is yeah. always a problem. Okay, so fine. As we begin to round off right now, in as much as um, the, uh, the app people uh, are lamenting some of the issues that uh, Uber and Boat uh, 
uh, the ones uh, doing um, the conversion instead of um, the union themselves. But what does the future really hold for the CNG? Because you mentioned in your analysis that, that the UK is targeting, you know, by 2029, that's in the 20, next five years. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so how, what do we see happening with CNG in the next five years uh, in this part of the world? So, like I said, the, the world is going um, very global and a lot's changing, you know, globally. So I see, I see us in the next five years. I mean, because of the, we have seen that petrol and diesel, we have seen how far that policy has taken us. Yeah. So if we imbibe this culture of this new policy of the CNG, I think it will really help us to stabilize our economy better. Because yeah. in a country where we depend so much on petrol for the slightest thing, for production of you know of manufacturers, for even for even for household needs, for you yeah. to power your house in a country where. Our, our power system is epileptic, so so these are issues. So I think if we really go that direction in terms of the CNG and the energies, I think that it will help us reduce a lot of pressure on our petrol and diesel use, which will also drastically reduce the price of a lot of food. And so even so in future, services. even for transport now in future, even you see that e, are you saying that e-hailing e um, apps and riders would actually reduce the prices? So they will because if the government is giving them fifty percent discount, so mm. I mean that's kind of, it will also help them reduce the price for okay. for users for you know uh, the riders for, for the for the taxes. All right, well said, uh, once a very big thank you to you, uh, thank most you, of all, for your time and your thoughts. Uh, we do appreciate that. We just hope that uh, we see all of these initiatives um, through, uh, like you said, the functionality and um, you know sustainability. We just want to hope that we can actually start aspiring like the UK, you know, in its plan to so, convert. Sorry, sorry, sorry to bother you. So funny, sometime last week we were talking about how government is. So I think the government is. Some of the government officials are listening to this program, and it's very critical that we mm. also say that. Mm. Last week, we were talking about why government needs to provide securities for, yes, farmers. for farmers. So yes. just yesterday, I saw the news mm. saying that, yes, they could, that the, the, I think this, uh, the government is providing 10,000 police officers to 19 states okay. to provide security for farmers. Yeah. So people are, they are actually listening, and it's a good thing. Okay. So right. that's why we must always continue to, you know. The advocacy, yes. Yeah, because I even had um, a report of um, agro hunters, you know, yeah. for... Yes. for farmers as well. Yes. All right, uh, thank you so much, uh, Mustafa, and thank, thank you, you too me. for watching. That's the size of the show for today. I am Justin Akadine. We'll return again same time next time. Bye for now.